Next uh, is Dr. Jihani De Silva. She has completed a PhD at the University of Ontawa. Uh, she uh, deals with a nuns in Sri Lanka. There is a place called the Sabara Kamara in Sri Lanka, and she is a senior lecturer at the university. And today, she is going to talk about the about from factionalism to unification, the prospects of the Sri Lankan fiction community. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very honored to be here, being invited for this uh, meritorious activity and I'm very grateful for Hanmam uh, Sion Foundation for inviting me uh, to talk on behalf of uh, Bikuni uh, community in Sri Lanka. Um, in Sri Lanka there's a, a community of Bikunis. The majority of them are affiliated with different types of Bikuni groups. Uh, previously, the Bikuni groups known as Dambulla, Naugala, and the Kanduala were considered to be uh, distinct fraternities by themselves. Uh, however, in this paper, I am going to provide details about how these once fragmented Bikuni groups started cooperating, as well as what the present situation is. Uh, looks like and um, I'm not going to give the whole picture about Sri Lankan Buddhist nuns community Bikunis are only one um, uh, community there are Silmatas like Tilashins in Myanmar uh, Silmatas are precept mothers kind of an alternative form of female renunciant group uh, in Sri Lanka, they are the oldest uh, compared to Bikunis in Sri Lanka. And there are Anagarikas and some Theranis. So there are different uh, types of Buddhist nuns groups in Sri Lanka. But today I'm going to talk about Bikunis only to stick and uh, because uh, it, it is easy to focus on one uh, Buddhist nuns group instead of these different uh, groups. Um, so, uh, this research, I've been researching about Buddhist nuns since 2007 for my bachelor's, my MPhil, and uh, very recently uh, for my doctoral thesis. And um, so, this is a kind of a part of uh, my research work. I was inspired to look into this uh, particular a topic from factionalism to unification because I met um, two pioneering um, figures uh, in 2019 Sydney Sakedita conference. Um, they are um, Mahopadya uh, uh, Bikuni Rahatunga de Sadda Sumana and uh, Ranjini De Silva, one of the uh, the pioneering activist. Uh, so when I met them, they uh, we we had a lengthy discussion about the Bikunis and Bikuni groups in Sri Lanka. For instance, I can still remember I started talking about just I said something Dambulla Bikuni to Ranjani De Silva. She was just amused and said, "No Dambulla Bikunis, don't use that term. That there's no Dambulla, something like that." And um, I was surprised why she's uh, telling me that, like, there's no Dambulla, but she just talked about generally about Bikunis in Sri Lanka. So that's where I started uh, researching about this unification and how, how they're working together. So that's what I'm going to present in this paper. Uh, so if I say something about, very briefly, because it's not uh, included into the translation, I think, because um, the Bikuni uh, order established in Sri Lanka um, in 3rd century BCE by Arhant Sangamitta, um, the daughter of Emperor, Indian Emperor Ashoka. She traveled all the way from India to Sri Lanka to establish the Bikuni order. The Bikuni order 
uh, tried for several centuries, and even there are records of Sri Lankan bhikkhunis. Um, they have, they had this missionary work to China, and uh, so many things they have done. But however, for unknown, unclear reasons, the Sri Lankan bhikkhuni order declined and died out around 11th, 12th century in Sri Lanka. Even bhikkhu order declined, but the bhikkhu order restored because, um, because there were bhikkhu orders from, they, they brought the bhikkhu order from, ordination from actually, from uh, Myanmar and Thailand. Uh, but no, no bhikkhuni order, so when when the Sri Lankan bhikkhuni order died out in around 12th century, it's not only for Sri Lanka, but for the whole Theravada world. So there's no record uh, from 12th century to uh, um, from 12th century, and we don't hear anything about nuns, and some scholars used to talk about some invisible nuns, but however, um, 19th, late 19th century, a movement uh, started, um, I think the movement inspired by B um, Myanmar Thilashins, uh, that's the order uh, we call them as precept mothers, and it is a kind of institutionalized organization like uh, Thilashins in Myanmar. They are supported by uh, Sri Lankan government and uh, kind of sponsored by the monks. Um, so, however, again, I'm not going to talk about them, but Bikunis. So, uh, the Bikuni ordination was revived in um, in the 1980s by worldwide network of uh, Buddhist individuals and organizations, despite significant opposition. Support for their initiatives has spread across national and international boundaries. However, I'm, uh, I shall abstain from digging into the global history of bhikkhuni lineage resurgence, which is complicated by uh, gender politics, religious authority, canonicity, orthodox issues. Uh, so I'm not going to focus on them. But very briefly, I'm, um, I want to talk about uh, <coughs> these three uh, uh, ordination, bhikkhuni higher ordination, that is important for Sri Lankan bhikkhunis. Uh, let's start with 1988, California bhikkhuni higher ordination. Uh, this ordination, uh, we can consider it as a watershed moment in the development of the contemporary bhikkhuni movement. This ordination was sponsored by Foguan Shan, Buddhist International Organization, which is situated in Taiwan and has a worldwide network of monastic institutions. 11 Sri Lankan uh, Silmatas, or candidates, were among the international candidates who traveled to California, but however, five only remained there. there. Um, uh, and uh, when these newly ordained bhikkhunis returned to Sri Lanka, neither the general public nor the media recognized them as uh, uh, bhikkhunis. These renunciants who had returned to their former lives as silmatas were dressed in silmata robes rather than saffron robes of bhikkhunis, um, as they had done when they first left the monastery. So uh, that is why we are going to talk about 1996 Sarnath Bhikkhuni Higher Ordination. A similar purpose of that of the 1988 California Ordination was pursued with the 1996 Sarnath Ordination, which took place on December 8, 1996, with the goal of elevating the standing of, standing of Buddhist women across the world. Korean monastics, including bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, collaborated with monastics from Asia to uh, resuscitate uh, a long tradition by ordaining women from all over the world, including 10 Sri Lankan women. Late Venerable Bhikkhuni Kusuma, also known uh, uh, 
by her lay name Kusma Devendra and Ranjani De Silva state that they initially approached an important Buddhist monk, Venerable Mapalagama Vipulasara, regarding, the, regarding Sri Lanka's participation in the 1996 Sadhanath ordination ceremony which took place in India. Vipulasara, Venerable Vipulasara himself was responsible for recruiting the Korean bhikkhuni Sang Wong called um, Mahabhikkhuni to organize Sri Lanka's participation in this ordination. Bhikkhuni Sang Wong, the chief incum incumbent of uh, poor Myungsa Temple Seoul, had a close relationship with Sri Lanka and was resident at the Paramadhamma Chetia Pirivana. In order to prepare for the high ordination, the organizers enlisted the help of Kusuma Devendra, who had recently returned from a three-month mission at Po Myunsa Temple in Seoul. Kusuma Devendra was tasked with studying the Upasampada text that would be used in the ceremony and leading Sri Lankan candidates through the rite. In their view, Kusuma Devendra's understanding of both the Dharma Guptaka and Theravada Upasampada rites was essential to the ordination process. The newly ordained bhikkhunis remain in India for training as controversy rage in Sri Lanka because now you can see that there was quite an opposition rage against the ordination when these bhikkhunis um, um, were a training had a training in India. So let's move to 1988, Bhikkhuni High Ordination, uh, Bodh Gaya. Following the Saranath ordination in 1996, the religious landscape in Sri Lanka began to shift. Venerable Inamalwe Sumangala, the chief monk of the Dambulla Cave Temple, and a few other leading monks determined that Sri Lanka's new bhikkhuni needed to be reformed. We need Sri Lankan bhikkhunis and we need to have Sri Lankan bhikkhuni on Sri Lankan soil. That, that's what they thought. Um, so, um, Venerable Sumangala and a few others convened the Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan uh, Sri Lanka Bhikkhuni Reawakening Organization on February 6, 1997. 31 Silmatas, all these are Silmatas, we have to remember that all these are Silmatas, were selected and they attended um, a program at Kalundava Bhikkhuni Training Center, uh, which is located three, several kilometers away from Dambulla Cave Temple. The first batch of uh, Samaneris spent nine months there. They are still, uh, still they are Samaneris and um, with challenging, uh, challenging conditions because according to even Cheng, uh, she report, uh, reported that there were no running water, no electricity and it was hard. Uh, so they had to overcome months of such difficulties according to Venerable uh, Bikuni Sumeda, uh, before they were able to hear Venerable Sumangala say the term Upasampada. My interviews uh, shows that although the Samaneris who trained at Dambulla faced obstacles, they also had a strong sense of purpose. They were prepared to struggle with great determination to achieve their goal of high ordination as bhikkhuni. Because I stated this because mostly, sometimes people and even scholars used to question the agency of these bhikkhunis that they had this something, the ordination was just given by someone else. But you can see that these bhikkhunis were waiting for it and they were, they, they were even had to, uh, they had to had very hard time in these places and even without their arms and stuff, so that's why I mention it here. In 1998, the Taiwanese Organization for Guanshan was prepared to fund a second international uh, bikuni high ordination. First one was there in California, now they are ready to organize another ordination. 
um, which uh, took place during the time when these big, big these samaneris were training at Kalundeva. So, Venerable Sumangala and Venerable Porogama Somalankara from Sarvodaya, and uh, they decided to send 20 uh, samaneris, so candidates for this second international ordination. So. So after the 1998 uh, Bodhgaya ordination was completed, the Sri Lankan bhikkhunis were required to travel to Sarnath, okay? Um, um, because uh, it's for a second ritual that would affirm that their ordination was authentically Theravada. I'm not going to dig into this, but because this, uh, uh, they are just funded and uh, uh, organized all this sponsored by Mahayana and Maha Mahayana tradition so they have to affirm that this should be a Theravada because otherwise they can't go back to their country. So uh, Dambulla Bhikkhunis uh, returned to Sri Lanka in February 1998 and were received by their lay patrons at the airport and promptly returned to Dambulla where they were able to ordain those who had remained at Kalundava Bikuni Training Center because only 20, but there were some other uh, uh, candidates who were waiting uh, for these Bikunis to come back. So, uh, Venerable uh, Sumeda claims that they were confronted tremendous opposition from a variety of parties, including senior monks and, and the media. When they arrived in Dambulla, two bhikkhunis were um, uh, selected as preceptors uh, and also pre precept masters. On March 12, 1988, a total of 22 candidates were ordained as bhikkhunis. The Board of Sri Lanka Bhikkhuni Order at Dambulla or, uh, organized additional ordination ceremonies between 1998 and 2000, resulting an increase in an membership and kind of a factionalism. Between 1998 and uh, 2000, three groups of bhikkhunis were ordained every year. After 2000, uh, the number was reduced to one group a year. Bhikkhuni Kotmale Siri Sumeda stated that the number of Upasampada bhikkhunis has surpassed 3,000 with the latest ordination in July 2021 monastic, uh, at monastic border of Rangiri Dambulla. So, so next I'm going to talk about, so this is all about uh, different groups and uh, the factionalism in uh, bhikkhuni groups in Sri Lanka. Outside Dambulla, bhikkhuni uh, Ordination uh, training centers also increased, and Sri Lanka's religious landscape became more complex. For instance, Venerable Talale Dhammaloka, the, uh, the deputy chief monk of the Amarapura Nikaya, or the Fraternity, who took part in 1998 Bodhgaya ordination, uh, hosted international ordination ceremonies in 2002 and 2004 at his temple, Tapodanarame, Mount, in Mount Levinia. Uh, also, Venerable Bhattagama Medananda, who aided the Silmatas for many years by building uh, them as island wide and uh, Arama network, planned to confer higher ordination on the Naugala Renunciants. However, in 2000, with the assistance of Ranjani de Silva, the Naugala Renunciants received ordination from Fuguan Shan in Taiwan. The Naugala Monastics has opted not to send any of its candidates to Dambulla, where Dambulla had planned to continue its bhikkhuni ordination legacy. Dambulla and uh, Naugala have even been considered to be distinct fraternities according to certain bhikkhuni informants. This tension was evident in uh, certain bhikkhuni communities that abstain from vine karma and where more than one group groups of bhikkhunis were present. There were no mixed quorums 
of bhikkhunis during the high ordination ceremonies prior to recent times. Political views are another point of difference between Neugala and Dambulla Bikunis. For instance, Venerable Kirama Vimala Jyoti, a highly visible nationalist monk, founded a Bikuni training and meditation center at Dekhanduvala, a rural area near Horana. A group of Neugala Bikunis who were ordained in Taiwan 2000 moved to Dekhanduvala center and began training and ordaining bhikkhunis there. More than 100 local women have sought ordination as bhikkhunis at the Kanduvala and many young women have been ordained as Samaneri. Factionalism among the bhikkhus has resulted in distinct bhikkhuni groups and allies, each with its own distinct identity and territory. For an example, Taiwan's chief judicial monk, Venerable Bodhagama Chandima, established the Manil Watta Temple in Biagama Kalania and the Bikuni Academy with the help of Bikunis from Thai Taiwan. Furthermore, the Manil Watta Temple continued its alms giving programs, which served a few thousand of female renunciants each year according to the temple, temple's website. The first mass arm giving ceremony sponsored by Taiwanese nunnery took place in 2010. At one juncture, they had a higher ordination ceremony for a group of bhikkhuni aspirants at Manil Watta Temple with the support of bhikkhuni preceptors, including two Dambulla bhikkhunis. This is really important. Um, two Dambulla bhikkhunis were in a quorum of bhikkhuni preceptors in Manel Vatta. However, the organizers did not continue the ordination ceremonies at Manel Vatta anymore. Um, so you can see that there are different bhikkhuni groups and there are different uh, uh, the monks who helped these uh, bhikkhuni groups. So what have brought these bhikkhuni communities together? It's kind of an important question that uh, we have to answer because Sri Lankan bhikkhuni co community, unlike uh, precept mothers, they are not recognized by the government. So uh, I think I mentioned that Silmata, so precept mothers, they, they are recognized by the government uh, and not uh, we can't compare it with monks but like um, they are sponsored but they are registered and they have ID card and uh, also uh, they, they can register their nunneries and some other facilities they can sit for government exams but for bikunis it's not like that and because of that they are not because they are not being recognized by the state or chief sangha uh, they don't have uh, these passports with title Bikuni and ID cards, national ID card, and they don't have registered nunneries, and they can't sit for government exams. It's really difficult, and they struggle a lot. I have told you that it's like 3,000, around 3,000. Altogether, I think 8,000 with some seminaries and other, uh, other young uh, nuns. So... So it took some time for this bhikkhuni co community and bhikkhuni groups to understand that they have to work together. Uh, so uh, for instance, uh, uh, for instance, uh, Venerable Inamalui Sumangala petitioned the Supreme Court in 2013 uh, in a concerted effort to improve the status of uh, bhikkhunis. However, this petition still remain unsolved. It is in 2013, it's in still uh, unsolved. And also they um, petitioned Human Rights Council in Sri Lanka. And um, this, uh, after six years, I think, uh, they, they just recommended the Department of Buddhist Affairs to thoroughly work on this issue and why you haven't um, I haven't resolved this issue, but however, uh, however, unfortunately, still 
um, it kind of the, there's only discussions about this what kind of title that should be used for bhikkhuni whether it's bhikkhuni or reverend or silmata or it's all only the discussions i think so so that is why uh, so this constitution of the all island bhikkhuni congress is important in an attempt to further advance the cause of the bhikkhuni groups on august 4 2018, a coalition of Bikuni organization, including Dambulla, Naugala, Dekandwala, agreed to work together to found All Island Bikuni Congress. Each group contributed a delegate to the All Island Bikuni Supreme Adversary Committee. Uh, this committee is made up of 22 members five senior monks, five senior bhikkhunis. It's important that they included into this com committee and they, are belonging, uh, uh, they were belonging to different bhikkhuni uh, groups. And five upasikas and five upasikas. They are more, they, I think they are mostly professionals and scholars. This alliance was designed to allow the different uh, bhikkhuni groups to retain their identity while ensuring representation on the executive committee of the AIBC. In addition, the, uh, in addition, the constitution of the uh, group was formally accepted on the occasion of 20th anniversary of the revival of the bhikkhuni order in Sri Lanka. A ceremony was held in Vihara Mahadevi Park in Colombo. There was a procession of 500 bhikkhunis and a traditionally dressed young couple carried the constitution in a golden, golden casket, banners with the statement Sukha Sangasa Samagi, meaning blessed is the harmony in the order. Venerable Sumangala and other high-ranking monks attended the event. A, it's kind of a watershed moment in the history of the revived Bhikkhuni Sangha in Sri Lanka. So next time, uh, I would like to talk about the present situation, public presentation of Bhikkhunis in Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan Bhikkhuni communities have gained a reputation for strict devotion to the Vinaya since the re-establishment re, uh, of the Bhikkhuni order in the late 1990s. They, in particular, adhere to well-known Buddhist doctrine. The English translation is, give faith to those who are faithless and increase the faith of those who have it. It creates the expectation that Buddhist monastics ought to give confidence to those who do not have confidence and to increase the confidence of those who already have confidence. That is what uh, even I, in, when I uh, interviewed these bhikkhunis, they used to say. Bhikkhuni organizers who belong to different bhikkhuni uh, clusters arrange various annual events, including commemorative processions, assemblies, arms giving programs as part of the annual programs in order to meet this expectation. These programs reveal the extensive planning that went into each of these events, which included everything uh, from the procession to talks and the presence of foreign delegates as well as outstanding leadership skills and strategies employed by the bhikkhuni organizers who manage their affairs without any official support without official support without the state support uh, and despite the fact that they are not officially recognized by the country's sangha authority or hierarchy. Bikunis are also effective in gaining public support for their cause and in certain case a global audience as well. So uh, so I would like to uh, talk about this the AIBC Sangamitta procession and I would like to show some pictures, few pictures on this event which shows that how these uh, once fragmented Bikuni groups work together um, the Sangamitta, this procession is called as Sangamitta. I, th I think you can remember Arhan Sangamitta who traveled to Sri Lanka 
so uh, Sangamita procession, which took place in 2019. I think after that there was no Sangamita procession because of the COVID. And I was lucky, I was doing my field work and I was so lucky that I could, uh, um, could uh, participate and uh, do this participation observation in this procession. The procession and its arrangements illustrate in microcrism the complexity and high level of organization needed for these events. You can see that all these um, things are actually created by bikunis themselves, the venue and everything, invitations and for the foreign delegates and everything they, they manage. Um, so I joined uh, Gampa District Bikuni organizers to travel to Colombo. And the first destination was Sri Medhalankara uh, School in Horana, where the arms giving took place for Bikunis in the morning. Uh, the Bikunis were organized into Sangamita pro procession following the arms giving. At the head of the procession, a decorated vehicle uh, a decorated vehicle carried the statue of Arhant Sangamitta, Sri Lanka's first bikuni, sheltered by a pearl encrusted umbrella and carrying a uh, bodhi tree sapling. The AIBC Sangamitta procession was a symbolic reenactment of the arrival of Sangamitta on the island of Lanka in the third century BCE. According to Mahavansa, the Great Chronicle, Sangamita sets sail from the coast of the Bay of Bengal to bring Buddhism to the island of Lanka. On the voyage, she had to fend off the Nagas. This is kind of a story. Uh, Nagas are semi-divine snake-like creatures that rule the sea by the strength of psychic powers. These powers manifested in the appearance of a supanna, a mythical enemy bird of Nagas, which Sangamitta, Arahan Sangamitta, used to protect the Bodhi sapling. The Mahavansa further described the artist's journey that Sangamitta had to make, which involved walking from the coastal port of uh, Dambukola for 14 days. So uh, Sangamitta, Arahan Sangamitta just walk with this Bodhi sapling for 14 days from northern part of Sri Lanka. It's not easy. So you can see that's walking. Uh, so that was remembered by the bikuni organizers to the participant bikunis. Please don't worry, you are just walking several miles. Venerable Sangam uh, Arhan Sangamitta just <laughs> walked 14 days to bring um, ordination to Sri Lanka and also had uh, a kind of very hard journey. Uh, the annual AIBC Sangamitta procession, in my opinion, relates to the reinvention of bikuni uh, lineage in contemporary Sri Lanka and so has a dual narrative and is the cause for celebration. Uh, while not all onlookers may have per perceived this symbolism, the organi uh, organizing bikunis were very aware of it. They were, there were parallels between Sangamita's journey and the physical conditions of the procession. When the procession lined up behind the Sangamita statue, the renunciants had to walk in the scorching sun for several miles. The bikunis donned robes similar colors to Sangamita statue. The, uh, the bikuni robes are very similar. It's like they are displaying that they are strong. Now they, uh, the bikuni order re-established in the country. That's what they are uh, celebrating and um, presenting. The procession also advertised the group affiliations of the different participating groups. Naugala Bikunis marched separately from the Dambulla Bikunis. This is my observation. But in the same procession, groups of Bikunis uh, carried banners to show which district uh, they came from. For instance, Kaluttara, Ratnapura, Kurunagala, the districts. Uh, the, the representation of various groups such as Dambulla, Naugala, and the Kandwala Bikuni communities in one yearly procession 
shows their endeavors to pros progress to make a unified impression under the theme Sukha Sangasa Samaggi, means bliss is the harmony in Sangha. Despite underlying tensions and disputes, the public demonstration of unity is evidence of the AIBC's effective use of various strategies to advance the collective uh, course of Sri Lanka's bhikkhuni communities. At the end of Sangamitta procession, a final assembly takes place that merits discussion. This assembly is congregation of four pillars uh, of the Sangha, a visible representation of how bhikkhuni movement has grown in strength. Sri Lankan bhikkhunis have gained the support of uh, some chief bhikkhus from the beginning of the moment since the late 1990s and the talks delivers by, delivered by the these chief because are important element of the final assembly. In their talks, the chief monks offer encouragement and inspiration of the bhikkhunis in their struggles for official status in Sri Lanka. The program and the final assembly that I attended in 2019 was organized to demonstrate various aspects of issues, resolutions, strategies, and prospects of the current bhikkhuni movement. It's really um, a kind of a very um, organized event. They talk about many things, ID cards, and encourage bhikkhunis, and bhikkhus share their views, and these bhikkhus are from different fraternities, and they uh, got together to talk uh, and encourage the bhikkhuni community in Sri Lanka. So finally, I would like to uh, uh, conclude my presentation in Sri Lanka, as we have talked about, uh, the majority of bhikkhunis are affiliated with different uh, bhikkhuni uh, groups. Once they were kind of, um, not big, but uh, kind of a fragmented community, but now they are working um, under one, um, one umbrella. So this is the picture that I want, wanted to show. This from uh, 2019, I uh, participated in a high ordination uh, ceremony in Shakyadita Center uh, near Colombo. And this is a mixed quorum. So the preceptors are from different, uh, different bikuni groups from Dambulla and Naugala and also from Shakyadita Center. And it's for, I think, for Vietnamese. Uh, candidates from doc Dr. Venerable Liu Pab or from Thailand. Uh, so this is the uh, kind of, it shows the unity and they can, uh, because uh, there should be five bhikkhunis, so you can see these different uh, bhikkhunis get together for ordination ceremonies for international candidates. That's, that's the uh, important fact I would like to mention. However, uh, I would like to conclude my presentation mentioning that today, uh, Sri Lankan situation, it's, uh, there's an economic crisis in Sri Lanka, so can't imagine how hard for these bhikkhunis the life is. I think they need help. Thank you very much. Yeah. 예, 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. 아... In the late 18th centuries, uh, the movement of Tilasin began, and also likewise in Sri Lanka, the preceptor nuns started their uh, ordination movement, which was supported by organizations in Taiwan. Uh, so far, they haven't got much uh, support from uh, from the nation. As there came an organization of victories appear, Shangamita is the one who created first Bhikshuni Sangha in Sri Lanka. 
if this this movement will, will continue, then the government will accept Bhikkhunis as part of Sangha. And I expect the prosperous Bhikkhuni Sangha in Sri Lanka.